Here's something that really breaks my heart. In order for us to know more about our heritage, our culture, and the way of life of our ancestors, we'll have to take a trip to Europe. For Africans to witness their spiritual, cultural, and traditional artworks, we can only do so under the presentation and the portrayal of the West. In museums across Europe, alongside the homes of wealthy collectors, you'll find the largest collections of African artifacts. This is really important because the identity of a civilization is heavily contingent upon their artwork. Hence, we can easily associate Greek paintings and potteries to Greek civilizations and Roman artworks to Rome. But what works of art can we associate with Africa, unfortunately. You'll find these intricate works of art spread across the museums in Europe in the British Registrar of Antiquities. This metal casting was referred to as a brass head of a man wearing an elaborate crested headdress, not knowing that what they're in possession of is a sculpture of a king of Ife, a headdress worn by kings in the past and till this day. Only in Africa and only Africans can understand the true value of these artifacts. Many have written about African art, referring to it as nothing short of child's play. A lot of these stolen arts are masks which only come to life when worn. These masks played an integral role in various societies who believed that the masks were inhabited by spirits, a means to revive their ancestors to summon them back to life. Now your sentiment in regards to African spirituality is besides the point of view of this video. My rhetoric here is, we shouldn't have to travel outside of our homes in order to learn more about where we come from. This is an entire culture being deprived of their identity and the rights to their own history. The presence of African art is very relevant to us today. It is evidence of an advanced civilization. It is proof of amongst the greatest cultures on the planet, pause. You don't get it. This is evidence of a civilization well advanced beyond its time. A time in which societies haven't even conceptualized the notion of a society. And I don't say this to brag. Actually, I do say this to brag. I am an ascendant of amongst the greatest cultures on the planet, and that is something to be proud of. It is a disservice to not only me, but everyone who will come after me to not possess in a tangible form this aspect of our history. African art is a part of our heritage, our identity, and we need to be able to express our cultural values unhindered. We have no inspiration, neither an inclination towards our art because it's simply not there. We are alien to our own culture, so when we are told that that we had nothing until the arrival of Europeans. We have no counter argument. We are thought to strive towards our colonial masters because that is the path towards civilization. There's no society on this planet who doesn't take pride in their own heritage, except Africa. Everyone is taught in schools, in communities about their heritage, except us. Let's face it, Europe isn't gonna open up their borders to Africans to come in and learn more about African heritage. And I don't condone that either. For hundreds of years, our culture is left to languish where it does not belong. This void of African art further dissociates us from our identity. And I believe that this is the reason why African history is seldom taught in Africa. Because where's the evidence of it? Where are the arts, the writings, the artifacts, the evidence of an advanced civilization, guys? 1,000 years before Christ, modern-day Nigeria was referred to as the culture of the Nok. Long before most civilizations, they were able to extract iron ore from the earth, and we made tools and art out of it. These works of arts were far more advanced than what we know came out of Europe at the time that they were made. Africa literally has been bled dry of its arts. You wouldn't find any in Africa anymore. In museums across Europe and in the homes of wealthy collectors, you'll find these missing arts. I am grieved because Africa doesn't even benefit from its own inheritance. Imagine being so wealthy that you can afford whatever it is that you want, including someone else's culture. The Congo maternity was a piece that we bought sight unseen. And you can imagine how exciting it was when it came to our home. The Luba figure was a piece that we saw at Sotheby's in New York, and we sat through the entire auction and didn't have the courage to buy it. And when the auction was finished, we were so angry that we didn't acquire it that we went to the dealer and we paid twice the amount of money he had just bid for it, and we have lived with it very happily. You know, seeing these sculptures from the culture of the Nok 
People who walked the grounds of Nigeria thousands of years before me sparked so many questions within me like, who are these artists? Obviously, these were people with an intricate perception on the way that they view the world. In the Berlin Museum today, you'll find a throne belonging to the 17th King of Bamun, Sultan Ibrahim Njoya from modern day Cameroon. Today, his grandson, Ibrahim Mbombo Njoya reminisces his grandfather's throne. He exclaimed that his kingdom is over 600 years old and that you can't wipe away 600 years with a stroke of a pen. He demands his rightful throne. Many are unaware of the market value of African arts. It is a $10 billion industry, with various cultures having a market value of over $10 million. In fact, many wealthy people in Europe don't hold their money in banks but retain their wealth in African art. This sculpture of a female Sunufo woman was auctioned for over $10 million, and I can't help but feel as though a piece of me is being auctioned somewhere in Europe. There's a lot of wealth being generated here. Wealth of course being an instigator to greed and corruption. Nigeria has been hit really hard. Knock culture art being so valuable on the market today. There are several illegal mines in Nigeria digging up my history and selling to the highest bidder somewhere in Europe. You know, a lot of Africans are upset because they would like to go to museums in their own country in order to see these artifacts and they're entitled to that feeling. But what's even worse is the practical implications of this. You see, back then there were no printing press, no photocopying machines, no pictures, no cameras. We needed a way to preserve the image of our ancestors, so we molded them. These were well revered people in our societies. These were the kings, queens, our priests, scientists, and inventors, all of whom are currently unaccounted for on the continent. Me being West African, this hits home especially because my people were metal workers. Amongst the first people on the planet to discover iron Iron. Iron played an integral role in their lives. According to Yoruba folklore, a hunter by the name of Tobe Ode was able to uncover the mysteries of iron. Long story short, through his discoveries, he was able to save his people. He was given the title of first amongst the mortals because he unraveled the mysteries of the earth, giving us iron, hence we're able to make tools and weapons out of it to win our battles. His title came by the name of Ogun, which translates spirit of iron. He was a real person who taught his people the mysteries of metal. Through his discoveries, my people expressed their gratitude through metal works. And I'm sad to say that somewhere in the British Museum is probably a sculpture of him being left to lavish. Speaking of Yoruba, fun fact. Although Yoruba is an indigenous ethnic group to Nigeria, did you know that there are more Yoruba people in Brazil than there are in Nigeria today? I hope you guys are still with me because we're just scratching the surface of this topic. There's still so much to be said. You can find a link to this full video in the description down below. You can head over to my channel to check out the full video. While you're at it, don't forget to subscribe to Tunacheki and also my personal channel, Akin Akin. And if you guys like this hoodie, I definitely love this hoodie. You can check out Tunacheki merch in the store that will also be linked down below. That's all for now. I love you all so much. Stay safe and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Remember to also leave your suggestions on topics that you'd like us to cover in the comments below.